Okay, in a couple of minutes, I'm going to um, ho hopefully explain to you uh, two, the two main epistemologies and how you can use them for educational research purposes. Now, with my student teachers at the University of Portsmouth, um, this is a seminar I spend a long time on, um, but I'm going to try and explain them to you in a couple of minutes. Um, there's pretty much two paradigms to epistemologies. You have more of a positive paradigm and more of an interpretivist paradigm. These can be crossed, actually, so they don't actually have to be um, necessarily completely positive or interpretivist. You can actually be a bit, a bit of a mixture of both. You might be something called a critical realist, but we won't worry about that at this particular time. So in a couple of minutes, using my cardboard box, I'm going to show you um, these two different approaches uh, to research given different epistemologies. Is a concept that student teachers sometimes can find difficult, but actually um, they can be ex explained in a quite um, a straightforward way. So, if we have this box with a couple of holes around it, hello, um, I might say to my student teachers, for example, how would you research creatures that were in this box? Now, some of the student teachers, they'll think about this for a moment, and some of them might say, for example, okay, I might look through one of the holes and I might watch how the creatures behave. Fair enough, I might do this over time. Um, I might even change the temperature um, and see how they behave. I might, for example, feed them different things and see how they behave. Um, I might, for example, change lighting and see how they behave. Um, very much um, the Hawthorne effect, but we won't go into that either now. Um, or some of the student teachers might say, oh, I'll tell you what, if I can, I'm going to get in the box. I'm going to talk to the creatures in the box. Um, I'm going to see how they think, what they think about living in this box, what they think about their surrounding. What is it like to be in the box? I might look at them from different angles. I may even, for example, say to them, if I can, and they talk, because this is an analogy, I might say to them, okay, how and um, um, how how's the context affect how you behave? How living in this box affects how you behave? And would it change if I put you into a different context? Also, you might always also um, think about, if I got in the box and talked to these participants or watched them, could me and my presence affect their behavior? in that box. Now, if you kind of think <clears throat> that's more you, you'd rather get into the box, find out what they think, um, see how they interpret it, the, interpret different events, um, and maybe even think about your relationship with the um, um, creatures in the box, then you're definitely probably more an interpretivist. Um, in fact, if you like to think about that relationship and how it might affect your research, then you're probably more of a feminist approach to research, but we won't worry about that now. If you like to, for example, measure the box, um, look at the way they behave over time, if you change the food, um, or if you change the um, uh, temperature or the lighting, then you're probably maybe more a positivist. Now, um, those aren't like, clear um, um, separation sometimes you get some overlap but generally speaking if you have a positivist approach you prefer quantitative data um, you like surveys and maybe closed questionnaires um, perhaps something that produces data that can be um, reproduced in another context um, interpretivists are really looking for more than depth they perhaps perhaps they would like more case study approaches ethnographies uh, maybe even action research but they like to um, think about very um, more small sample sizes very small they could even be one two three even that small but the depth is the most important thing and then you're really looking more at an interpretivist approach